Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, I'm going to round up with you guys the Asian Cup, round of 16, day two. Oh, my God. We had so much drama. We had so much drama, in particular, one game. We'll get to the other game in a bit later. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about that game, so I'm going to just keep most of this video on this game, guys. Iraq 2, Jordan 3. So it's me, AD744. If you're Asian Cup coverage, you guys know I cover the Asian Cup on a daily basis, so please consider subscribing and like the video if you did enjoy. So... Let's start with this game, man. Wow, what a game, man. What a game this was. This was definitely the best round of 16 game by far the Asian Cup. And there's a lot of controversy. We'll get to the controversy in a bit. Let me just start off and say this right now, though. That first half from Iraq where it was simply abysmal. Simply abysmal. Like, every time Jordan went on the ball, they looked like they would create a chance. They looked like they would create a chance. You look at the statistics here, man. First half. Yeah, Iraq had more possession. Yeah, they had 64% possession. Six shots, one, sorry. Look at Iraq. Look at Jordan, though. Jordan had 36% possession, seven shots, three on target, two big chances missed. You got to give credit to Hassan. Hassan, the goalkeeper today, was fantastic for Iraq. He made a lot of crucial saves in the day, and, and there was a lot of chances. Finally, Jordan opens the scoring before halftime, rightfully so. A terrible mistake from Al Amari, who I thought was one of Iraq's best players in the Asia Cup so far. He made a horrendous mistake for Al Namid, and Al Namid uh, scores a beautiful chip over the goalkeeper to make it one nil Jordan. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is a, this is a bad start from um, Jordan. Did Iraq underestimate um, Jordan potentially? And then you look at the second half, man. Um, Iraq came alive. Iraq's, you know, is like, you know what? We're not here to mess around. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're here to make business, you know, and you have to give credit to Kessas. Kessas made two changes on um, three changes before the goal. Zidane Egbel, Merchistowski, and Mohamed Ali. Ali. And finally, Iraq gets their equalizer from a great set piece there. Obviously, Najee, the center back, scored from a close range. It was a bit of a scruffle. And at that point, it was like, okay, 1-1. One, one. Great, great uh, goal to score there. And obviously, the assist was from al Jassim, who I thought um, was fantastic for the day. Then, beautiful finish from Hussein. Ahmed Hussein scores a lovely, lovely goal in the 76 minute. Great, great finish. And then basically gets a yellow card for celebration. And because he was already in a yellow card, he got a second yellow, meaning that he got sent off. And apparently, he did the same exact celebration that you Jordan player did um, when they scored. And he didn't apparently get a yellow card for the celebration. So there's that's the controversy there in the sense that, okay, if, uh, if, if Jordan did the celebration for the goal, how come they're not getting a yellow card? And how come Iraq got a yellow card for the celebration? You know, this is where the controversy arises. Um, for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the yellow card for celebration, unless you like, basically, if you basically taunt the fans, you, you mock the fans, stuff like that, then I'm, then it's for me bad. But it, generally speaking, if you're just like celebrating, I don't really consider that being a yellow. I, I, I don't really know, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, referee gave the second yellow and Hussein gets sent off. And it's a major talking point in this game because a lot of Iraqis believe that if Hussein didn't get sent off, this would have been a completely different game. But this is where I got to talk about Kassan. I'm sorry, Kassas. Why the heck are you, when you're 2-1 up with 10 men to go, 15, around like 20 minutes to go, why are you being so attack-minded? You have to be defensive. And this is why I say is that you have to have in-game management. And you could see Iraq didn't have in-game management because as soon as when they down at 10 men, uh, they, they, they folded, you know. And eventually, Jordan kept pushing and pushing. They finally got the equalizers there. Great, great uh, goal there. Um, I believe it was Al Areb. Great, great scuffle there in the box. It was a bit of a, a bit of a, um, 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 scruffle there. And Ali Adnan made the mistake coming off on the bench, man. And then finally, Jordan scored the last minute to get rushed on. Scored a beautiful goal. The 97th minute, a crazy, crazy effort. Long-range effort to seal it for Jordan. And for Iraq, man, they bow out of the tournament after losing 2-3. And it was such a disappointment because Iraq coming into this was such a good form. They had a brilliant group stage. They had a favorable route to the semifinals. And now, all of a sudden, they're out of the tournament. And it's just a disappointment because this was a winnable game. This was a winnable game for Iraq. And shout out to Jordan, man. This is the first time they ever won the knockout stage of a, in the Asian Cup. So you have to give them that props because that's incredible achievement for them to do so. And as for Iraq, man, they're gonna be they're gonna be disappointed with this. They're gonna be disappointed with this, losing this kind of fashion. And for Jordan, man, huge, huge win. And now they're playing against Tajikistan in the quarterfinals, and that's a very favorable matchup for them. So for Iraq, man, very disappointing. Um, you know, like I said, obviously the main card receiving the ref, and a lot of people are saying Iraq got robbed and stuff like that. 
And the thing is, like, we just have to accept it, you know. And I think Iraqis have to accept that they didn't have a good control of the game. And ultimately, it's just, it was just, it is what it is. And, you know, I believe Iraq and Jordan have this rivalry against one another. I believe they're two, um, they're, I believe they're rivals. And so that's pretty much, that probably explains the celebrations of this game and how much it meant for them. And so for Jordan, man, shout out to them. They got the job done. And for Iraq, man, it's a very disappointing, man. And I feel bad. I wanted to see Iraq versus UE in the quarterfinals. But, hey, we got another upset. You know, who who doesn't love upsets, man? Upsets are amazing this tournament. We've got two big upsets. Tajikistan upsetting UEE. And now Jordan upsetting Iraq. So that's pretty much my thoughts about this game. Um, I don't really have much more to add here. Um, and once again, man, Iraq, man, very, very disappointing. And, um... <sighs> Let's see how they re re recover from this, man, because it's a tough bill. It's a tough bill, and I'm, I'm sure many Iraqis will ne want, never want to discuss about this game ever again. Moving on, we have Qatar 2, Palestine 1. Now, this game wasn't as controversial as the other game. Um, obviously, this one wasn't as controversial. And for me, Palestine, for the first half, they were fantastic. I think Palestine really took the game to Qatar. Qatar in the first half were very, very abject, very, um, very uh, uninspiring. And you could see Palestine were creating chances on the counter attack. You know, they had five shots, three on Charlie get uh, one big chance. Qatar didn't really do much the first half. And then that goal from Dabag, man. Dabag is such a big player for Palestine. He is so, so important. Look at the goal he scored today. That was a fantastic individual effort from a long range. And credit to Qatar, man. And they kept pushing for the equalizer. Great, great set piece there. Um, You know, great, great corner. Great, great pass. Um. And it was great finish. Great, great finish to make it 1-1. Akram Afif, man, got the assist with a goal. Haido scored a great goal from the corner. And it was just smart, man. It was smart. It was like almost like corner taken quickly. I don't want to give memories of that, but it was almost like how smart it was, like how quickly they reacted. And I think for me, that goal before halftime really destroyed Palestine. I think that goal before halftime really demoralized Palestine because now they could have gone into halftime being 1-0 up, and now they're in a position where they're no longer leading. You know, and the momentum is now with Qatar. Clumsy mistake made by Sully. And um, obviously, um, gave away penalty. Akram Efi steps up and he scores a penalty to make it 2-1 to um, Qatar. Palestine kept pushing. Um, but you can see Qatar's defense was just resolute on the day. Um, and Qatar, Palestine just wasn't able to come from behind. So, for Qatar, man, they're in the quarterfinals of the... The Asian Cup, and they'll be playing against Uzbekistan or Thailand. We'll see which one they play against. And for me, Qatar, man, they, they really should be making the semifinals at bare minimum. Like, they have a very, very favorable route because they don't have to play against either Japan or Iran until, like, the semifinals. And now, here's the thing, though. With this tournament going, with the, with the way how this tournament is going, Qatar may bow in the quarterfinals. So, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, yeah, man, for Palestine, man, they just got to... My issue with Palestine is that they played a good game. It's just that clumsy mistakes and i just think the experience got to them the just the pressure got to them playing against a host nation this kind of atmosphere and um, i just think for me for house night they just have to be a bit better in the final third because like i said defensively they're solid from what i've seen in the asian cup they're defensively solid it's just that the big issue i have is they're just not clinical enough in the final third that's the big issue i have so shout out to qatar man they got the win um a massive massive win they also can see their first goal in asian cup history after Japan scored against them, of course, Asian Cup Finals. They had a long streak of not conceding goal until Japan did. So, Palestine, man, it was tough for them, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this reaction to both games. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And let me know your thoughts about the Iraq-Jordan game, because I'm really interested to see what you guys say, because uh, it, it's definitely a controversial game. So, yeah, like I said, guys, remember, guys, like and subscribe. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out. Mm -hmm.